Hi there. I started on another project, and since it's 2013, um, if you don't document your life, it didn't happen. So I'm going to document this, also because it's kind of interesting. This is one of three bench supports that my neighbor was trying to throw away. Um, they'd had them at a cottage at some point or other, brought them down to their house here in Toronto, and then... Um, didn't have space for them, and I guess part of that was that uh, they would made the bench eight feet long with these boards. And I look at it and say, well, that's pretty cool. I can easily make that into a four-foot bench, right? Planning to free cycle these boards, except they use cheap, knotty pine, and it's too wide for these holes. As you can see, the mounting holes that are drilled into this piece are spaced in a way that allows for something about three quarters this width um, to go into each one. And then probably you'd want to have some wider pieces that are narrower around the edge, maybe. Um, what I was planning to do was to, to rip these down into half their width and then lay them out and let that space go. Then being only four feet long, maybe some of the checking and cracking that's in this wood wouldn't affect it. But uh, I'll see how that goes. I will trim these down. I plan to um, sand and paint them, I think. They're not good enough that it's worth putting any kind of another finish on them. I'm going to paint these with a hammered metal finish of some kind, try to give them a little bit of a weathered um, look, and then I'll do something appropriate for the wood to, to match that up. And uh, then we'll see what we're going to do to finish it. So first we're going to sand, then prime, then paint, uh, set up the wood, uh, fill some holes in the wood, put it on here, put some bolts in it, and uh, we'll see what we end up with. Anyway, that's the start. Um, it's June 9th today. I don't see myself getting this done in the next, uh, well, today for sure, or even in the next little while. It might take me a bit of, the, bit of time over the summer here and there to work on it. But that's where we're starting from. Let's see how it turns out. Right? I sanded through a couple of layers of paint and found this. There was a sticker on there, I guess, originally. It is a sunshine bench from Etron Ornamental, Toronto, Canada. Okay, so now they're all prime. Primer paint over everything. I'm trying to cover up the rust more than anything. Also seal the old paint in. Mine's going to go on top and I kind of hope that it's going to stick together and not wear off too quickly, just crack off, fall off. It's funny that there's lots of drips and things from the old paint, and now they really stand out a lot more now that it's a, a flat color. I'm going to paint them, though, with this textured paint. It is a metallic copper uh, finish, and it says aged copper indoor-outdoor durability. I'm not sure that I'm going to top coat this, so hopefully that's going to stick and uh, do the job. I want it to be a little bit textured because it will hide some of the imperfections, the lumps and so on, and it'll also um, cover up some of the spots where the rust is obviously still going to show through. So, time to paint. Okay, so that's the copper colored paint. And now that it's on there, I'm not even sure I like it. So I might just have to go and pick up a different color. So I'll leave this sit on here. If nothing else, it'll form a nice base coat. These gonna dry in the sun, take a little bit, not very long at all. You may have noticed it's super, super windy and it's making it a little bit difficult to paint outside. I have nowhere else to do this. So. Um, no mask, no respirator, and I can feel I have paint in my arm hair. Okay. So, I think a different color, next coat, and then start thinking about how I'm going to assemble the, the bench itself. Stinking hot today, of course. One thing I forgot is that I'm going to need a way to fasten the wood to the, uh, the steel frame support pieces. And uh, so I need some bolts. I threw away the bolts that I had when I got it. They were all covered in, in blue paint, and I, I didn't even think to save them. 
Um, so I went out, my first thought was to get brass bolts, but they cost a lot of money. Brass is quite expensive. So I got regular bolts. I'm going to put some paint on them, and um, I'll use those. So let's spray paint those. So my plan to actually re recycle or free cycle the wood that came with my bench um, fails mostly because of this. The wood was just too far gone and I couldn't get the 15 pieces that I needed out of it. So what I did buy is some finger jointed pine. Not the best quality, not the, the, the uh, top of the line stuff, but it will do for what we want to do and it could be actually probably somewhat thinner than that for a bench just this short but mine's going to be pretty sturdy. I'm going to have to stand on this to do laundry and hang up my wash. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is sand off the ends here. First I'm going to drill some holes. I've made a little template um, for the end holes here and uh, then I'll find the center point for each one and, and, and make a hole for that. Uh, when we've done that and when we've uh, sanded the corners I've got uh, some stain. I was going to do a different color, but what I've got is some stuff that I already have on hand. That's a polyurethane. First thing is wood conditioner. When I did my first few pieces of uh, refinished furniture, I didn't think that was important. I didn't use it. It seems like an unnecessary expense. Definitely do it. It makes the stain stick in better. It looks better. Um, I was going to do a green tone finish or uh, kind of a greenish blue. Uh, but what I have is this red mahogany. You can see I've had this around for a long time. I hope it's all right. The red mahogany finish here from Minwax is, is a really nice color. It's a deep, rich red, uh, brown color. Uh, so I'm going to use that. This bench is not going to be at all what I thought with the brass and green kind of finishes that I was planning in my brain, but I'm sure it'll turn out fine. And then we're going to do some polyurethane. And I've got this stuff here, which is flooring stuff. Or rather, I used it for my floors, it's for other things, but... Um, for outside, I'd use spar varnish, but I have this on hand, so I'm going to use that. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So, holes, and sanding, and staining, and assembly and varnish, or varnish and assembly and varnish. Right? Let's see how it goes. cooperating, but I managed to get some stain on here. Not as good as I would like because I ended up doing a lot of it at night and you can see some heavier, area, heavier areas that I wasn't able to uh, control, especially in the dark. Um, and then when I was wiping uh, the stain, it wasn't consistent, so I left some on in the night and let it sit. So it is what it is. I'll try to put these ones that have the heavier stain kind of marks. This is the back side, so the ones that have the heavier stain marks here. I'll put them on the seat side, so in order to see it, I have to crawl underneath. No one's ever going to see the back of this anyway, so I'm good with that. It is just a question of, you know, keeping it uh, correct and complete and whatever. I'm trying to be as, as, uh, as professional as possible as a complete amateur. I was going to use this polyurethane. Now these are stained. I'm going to put some varnish on. And I had this leftover polyurethane. This is the same polyurethane I used for the floors in my house. It was, uh, of course, in bigger containers then. This one is perhaps not even three quarters. It feels like it's, you know, seven eighths full. And it's leftover from whatever it was that I was working on before. Um, I don't know what. I might, you know, some piece of furniture or whatever. So I had a lot of it. I was going to use it. My problem is I got a little concerned just because I know it's only for interior use, and I was thinking about what might happen if I ended up. Um, leaving it out, it's going to flake, it's going to look bad eventually. So I did get the, the Helmsman Spar varnish, which I've used for exterior before, which of course is lovely. You can coat canoe paddles and, and well, canoes um, with this varnish, and of course, outdoor wood projects. So we'll do that. That's going to be the Helmsman Spar varnish, and I'm going to varnish these up, and then it'll be time to assemble it, finally. And, uh, what, it's now the 6th <laughs> of July. And that's how well the weather's been treating me today. It's overcast, but it's warm. 
and uh, there's a threat of rain later and then rain tomorrow. So I have today, this is a Saturday, um, to get this part of it done and then drying overnight, hopefully assembled tomorrow. That's the Sunday. Uh, we'll see how the weather goes. It might be another week before I get this done. Who would have thought it would take so long? Now, if I had an interior space like a garage, this project would have been done ages ago. Right, so how's the square varnish? Let's do it. Okay, so finally I have my painted support pieces for my bench. I have varnished these with spar varnish for outdoors. I'm going to put another coat on after it's assembled, and that way I'm actually going to varnish right over the, the, the bulkheads and everything. Um, I didn't make a video of the varnishing because there has been so much rain lately and so much threat of rain that I couldn't get a reliable four to six hour window where I could put the varnish on and dry these. So I actually painted them twice at night. Uh, varnish them twice a night. If you like what the varnishing looked like, it was pretty much like the staining, but with varnish. That's pretty exciting. Uh, so what we're going to do is stick it together. And of course, I've drilled three holes in each piece, and I have my painted bolts that we're going to stick into the corresponding holes on here. Now, each of these pieces weighs about, uh, I would say, 20 to 25 pounds. So all together, when this thing is assembled, it's going to be like a 100-pound bench. Well, yeah, probably I'd say the wood's 15 pieces there. That might come out to another 25 pounds, so there could be a 100 pounds of bench here. So that's pretty substantial. This is going to be a, a heavy-duty thing. You know what? I don't know if I should uh, give some thought as to which ones go where, because some of them are smoother than others. This is some, some cheap wood. But uh, I'm going to start throwing it together and see how it goes. Yeah, that's great. <coughs> so... This is assembly. And there it is, the finished thing. As you can see, all put together with the little bolts that I painted, stained up with the red mahogany, the metal parts painted with the hammered uh, bronze finish. And I have, of course, cleverly located it directly beneath the bird feeder, so there will perpetually be, I guess, uh, bird seed bits stuck in the seams, the cracks between the boards. So that's it. That's my bench. Very exciting, right? Uh, far more work than I had planned on it being. I thought it was just kind of a repaint and stick back together project, but uh, it turned out quite nicely. Now I have to look at my deck and think about maybe um, staining it to match. Or possibly not. Cheers.